Hi there, RC Girl here. Today I'm back with a short video about how to swap out your LiPo battery connectors. I don't know about you guys, but I run XT60s on all my batteries, all my ESCs. It's really nice to have consistency across all the gear that you're running, but you also shouldn't let the connector limit your battery purchase options. Today I'm gonna to walk through all the steps to swap out your LiPo battery connectors. If you guys wanna see how to do that, stay tuned. So if you're new to my channel, welcome. Here you're gonna find RC reviews, tips and tricks, run videos, flight videos, and other things related to RC. So make sure you guys like and subscribe if you wanna see more in the future. Jen's Ace sent me some batteries to try out in my new Axial SCX-102 build series. This is from their new Adventure Series line. This line was built specifically for RC crawlers in mind. It has the nice dimensions, fit for your scale trail rigs, also 2 and 3S power, which is usually the power system that we run in some of the crawlers. I'm excited to try these out. So let's take one of these into the shop. I'm heating up my soldering iron as we speak. I'll show you guys everything you need to swap out your connectors. And most of the stuff's available on Amazon. So I'll make sure to put links in the description box below, but let's take this inside now. If you guys have been in RC for a while now, you probably have a lot of this stuff, if not way nicer. But if you're new to RC, this is a great setup for you to consider. You can use this to solder all your electronics, swap out your life with battery connectors. This equipment will definitely be really useful in the RC hobby in the long term. First, we have our soldering iron. This is set to almost the highest setting. This isn't a high-end soldering iron. They usually come with different tips and everything. This one will do the job on a budget. I actually have a soldering iron stand that I got from Radio Shack when I first started RC a long time ago. You do wanna make sure that you don't touch the soldering iron tip to the edge of the stand. It's gonna release the heat. You really want the iron to be holding all the heat. Next, you're gonna need some solder. So there's different kinds of solder. This one has flux incorporated in it as part of the solder itself. But if not, you might wanna consider getting some flux. It really helps the metals to adhere to one another. Next, you're gonna need the connector that you use. These are XT60s and the female part is always on the battery end. With XT60s, it's a little weird because this is the end that slots into the other one, um, but it's actually the metal pins that you wanna look at, not the connector exterior. These are the upgraded XT60s where you don't have to use heat shrink. It has this little cap that fits over the soldered end. It'll be a nice and clean look for you. They usually come in yellow and these ones come in black. I think they're really cool. They came in a pack of 10. I bought them on Amazon. Link in the description box below. So with this method, there's a lot of safety considerations. You might want to wear some safety goggles. You're going to be cutting some wires and they're really fine. So consider wearing safety goggles. We're also gonna need some tape. So that's gonna prevent the ends from arcing. And arcing is when the two ends, you complete the circuit on the battery and you're gonna see sparks. It can be really dangerous. So you wanna be very cautious to not touch the two cables of the battery together. I'll show you guys a method for how I prevent that. This is my old pocket tool and I put a battery around it. This is gonna hold our connector in place while we're soldering. You can also use the helping hand soldering tool or if you're very new to soldering, I would definitely recommend learning from a pal or having some supervision your first couple times until you master it. Then lastly, you're gonna need some wire snippers and some wire strippers. Okay, let's get started. So let's grab our battery and we'll zoom on in and I'll show you guys step-by-step -step how you swap these out. When I go about this, I try to do it the same every time. So I usually start with the black cable. So we're gonna take our wire snippers and we're only gonna cut the black cable. Do this one at a time. If you cut both of the cables at the same time, this metal is gonna complete the circuit and you're gonna cause sparks. It can be really dangerous. So always do one cable at a time. You're gonna wanna preserve as much of the cable as you can. The deans end about right here. And then just to get this out of the way, I usually rubber band it to the side of the battery and get the balance port out of the way as well. Okay, so remove the old heat shrink here. And then we're going to strip a little bit of this casing off of it. I would say about a half a centimeter. This is pretty high gauge wire, so I use the largest setting on my wire strippers. You don't wanna go all the way to the cable, you just wanna cut the plastic off. Okay, that looks pretty good. Here you wanna make sure all the wires aren't deformed from when you snipped it. Make sure all the wires are all together as well. If there's any stragglers, remove those. So then next, grab your connector and your little helping hand soldering tool. Make sure that your iron is preheated and on and grab your solder. 
One thing that's very important is that you match up the black to the negative terminal. It should have a plus and a minus somewhere. So here we have the plus, here we have the minus. So your black is always gonna be where this little triangle piece is. And the red is gonna go on the plus terminal. First though, we need to pre-tin each of the ends. So both of the terminals here and also the wire on the battery end. I like to have my soldering iron in one hand and then the solder in another, and you can come at it from both sides. So first you're gonna touch the soldering iron. Make sure you have enough solder available. And you're gonna fill this little cup with solder. Hold the heat to it and it should melt in really nicely. So that's a pretty good pre-tin I would say. And since I'm here, I'm gonna do the other end as well. Hold it to the middle piece, heat up your solder and hold it there. Let it sink in and remove the heat. Put your soldering iron back. That looks pretty good to me. I would say that's good to go. So we'll put this aside for now. Next, we're gonna wanna pre-tin the cable. So I like to kinda just let it hang here. I like to use the side of the iron to heat it up because it has a higher surface area. And then you wanna make sure that solder has kinda soaked in around all sides. Let it soak in. I think we're gonna need some more, so I'm kind of turning the cable so I can get at it from another angle. Another thing you wanna be cautious of is that the wires start to heat up pretty quickly. So if it gets a little bit too hot, I would recommend wearing a glove. Should have done that earlier. You don't wanna overheat everything because you could fry the circuit board in the battery or if you're soldering on the ESC end, you could fry something. So hold just enough heat just to do the job and then remove the heat quickly. So grab your connector, everything's pre-tinned. Make sure again, double, triple check that we're soldering to the negative here. You wanna align it with the terminal. Of course, if you have heat shrink or if you have this little connector here, make sure that you add, slide that through, <laughs> otherwise you're gonna have to unsolder everything. What you're gonna do here, you're gonna need to heat up the solder on the cable, you're gonna need to heat up the cable, and you're gonna need to heat up the brass part right here. So that's a lot of things to heat up. So be patient, let the soldering iron do the work, and you'll see kinda when everything starts to melt together. Remove the heat, touch it up a little bit if you need to, cool it down, and we're good to go. This is a very important safety step. Grab your piece of tape and cover up the soldering terminal that you just did because you don't want any of these two cables to connect. It's very important, I must highlight. So let's cover that up and then let's do the other side. Now we're gonna cut our red cable. Same thing, you cut as high up as you can. If one cable is longer than the other, you wanna make sure that you're getting them the same length. You don't want your batteries to be all wonky. Grab your wire snippers and snip the end. Take off your heat shrink. Grab your wire strippers. Cut about a half centimeter of the rubber casing off. Make sure that nothing's deformed, that there's no stragglers, that this is a nice cable end shape. If it's not, you can give it a little twist. We already pre-tinned the XT60 connector. We're gonna also need to pre-tin this cable here. We'll put that in the rubber band. Apply your soldering iron, apply some heat, apply a little solder, let it soak in. Check the other side. I'm gonna want a little bit more solder on this side. That looks pretty good to me. Don't forget to slide it through either your heat shrink or the end cap of the XT60 connector. Grab your little grabber, your friend, if anyone's helping you, and apply your heat. Sometimes to get the heat reaction, you gotta add a little bit more solder. There we go. That looks pretty good to me. Check all around, make sure everything's bonded. Then you can remove your tape. Last thing to do, slide this on up. Sometimes these are a little hard to snap on. Grab some pliers. Ta-da, there you go. 
no sparks, no expensive equipment, and really easy and quick to do. So that is how you swap out your LiPo battery connectors. I hope you guys found this quick how-to useful. If you did, let me know in a comment below. Thanks again to Jen's Ace for sending out some batteries for my new SCX-102. I'm excited to try these out in my Road to Axial Fest builds. I'm also thinking about doing some more videos on LiPo batteries. I get a lot of questions. What do all the numbers mean? What are the different sizes? What batteries should I go with? What about all the different connectors? So I'd love to answer those questions in some videos coming up soon. If you guys want to see more, make sure to like and subscribe as always, or see you later.